you come to prayer with me this morning, loving God, you are the one who has shown us the way of unconditional love in our lives. Allowing us to fulfill your perfect will when we are unable to, we know that just because this building still may be closed during these times in our lives, you continue to show us that the church is still alive and open. We are undefeated. Whether we are together or apart, you never leave us behind. As we come and experience your resurrection on this Easter morning, continue us to allow that unfailing gift of your presence in our lives. Let us celebrate with Easter joy, allowing us to have this day once again soon to be together again in person. So I ask now that you would touch my lips of clay, mold them into the words that need to be spoken this morning, and the words that come from my mouth and the meditations that come from each and every one of our hearts, may they ever be acceptable to you. In Christ we pray, amen. I'm so thankful this morning that we made it to worship, fighting all that traffic on the freeway, trying to find a parking spot across the street on the lot. Oh, wait a minute. You're not actually here in person this morning. But in all seriousness, I am so thankful this morning that you have taken the time to come and worship with us virtually. But what I also love about today that not only that it's Easter, while we're not physically gathered in this place together, that we're gathered virtually. And even while you and I are gathered today via the internet, it's not just about us, but it's the thousands and thousands of other churches today that are gathering just like us, doing the same thing that we're doing during this pandemic, celebrating and observing one of the most greatest events in the history of the world. That three days after Jesus died on the cross, they rolled open the tomb to find that it was empty. He wasn't there because we have a savior named Jesus who we can say this about him. He is risen. He is risen indeed. And this morning, I want to take a few looks in different aspects of that life of Jesus that were undefeated. That first aspect of Jesus's life was his ministry. His ministry was undefeated. And if I go back into Mark's gospel this morning, back into chapter two, we hear this of Jesus coming and telling us who he was coming for. It says, while Jesus was reclining to eat in Levi's house, many other tax collectors and notorious sinners joined him and the disciples at dinner. You see, at this point, Jesus was hanging out with those in which religion had rejected. And as it continued, it says, while the religious scholars who belonged to the Pharisees saw that he was eating with the tax collectors and sinners, they complained to the disciples. Why does the teacher eat with these people? Well, this is telling us that those people of this religious elite, those people who have excelled in their religiosity, shouldn't really be eating with people like that. Jesus overhearing the remark says to them, people who are healthy don't need a doctor. Sick ones do. I have come to call sinners, not the righteous. So if you think about it for a moment, Jesus did not come to this earth. He didn't just put on flesh and come here for those people who had deemed to be perfect. What happened is Jesus came here to put on flesh to become one of us, to come and help people just like you and me. Jesus comes to us in order to claim the people that needed him, that were hurting. Those who may not have it all put together, Jesus actually came for those that religion had rejected. I mean, when the Pharisees were there acting up, Jesus was right there. And as they were speaking up, Jesus is telling them that you're all not good enough for this. Because, you know, those are my peeps that you're talking about out there. Not only does Jesus come for the sinners, but he also offers these miracles to the people. You see, the ministries about Jesus are about him coming to the people and blessing them. And sometimes throwing in a miracle here or there. 
Jesus did things like restore sight to the blind, gave the gift of being able to hear to those people who were deaf. He went to the mute and gave them the ability to speak. Think about it for a moment. He even took a few loaves of bread and a few other things and he fed and a few fish and he fed and created food to feed the thousands. Jesus casted out demons from people. Jesus raised people for the, from the dead, all for the benefit of the people. And one of my favorites of all times and the very first miracle that Jesus ever performed was turning that water into wine. But what was so remarkable about the miracles of Jesus is that those who were against him never once debated the validity, validity of Jesus' miracles. So we think about it, those who were against Jesus and even spoke against him, they never once debated the validity of these miracles. No one ever looked at Jesus and said, hey, dude, you never did that miracle. No one ever said, Jesus, dude, you never raised anyone from the dead like you say you did. And you want to know why? Because they witnessed it. They saw it with their own eyes. Even those who were against Jesus saw him do these miracles and they were witness to it. The only reason why they told Jesus to stop doing these miracles because they couldn't figure out how he did it. All I can say is that I'm sure the work and the ministry of Jesus has created so much change in each and every one of us because Jesus was undefeated in his ministry for the people. Now that second aspect of Jesus' life is, is which is the resurrection of Jesus. That resurrection is undefeated. The resurrection of Jesus three days after the death, after he died, this brutal death for us on the cross, he sacrificed himself for each and every one of us. And if you recall from the gospel reading that was read this morning, there were three women, Mary of Magdala, Mary the mother of Jesus, and the mother of James and Salome all making their way towards the tomb of Jesus. And at the same time here, we do need to remember why they were going to the tomb of Jesus. They had spices and linen and everything they needed to prepare his body, or as the text described it this morning, to anoint his body. But to anoint his body to remain in that tomb for eternity and forever. Now, that's what they were going to do, but on their way, as they were having a conversation with another about how heavy that stone would be to move, they're kind of saying to each other, girl, that stone is really going to be heavy. You're going to have to move it so we can get in. And the other one says back to her, oh, no, honey, you need to move it. And they were going on back and forth of who was going to actually have to move the stone. And having that conversation as they showed up at the tomb, and as we heard in the gospel this morning, it says, when they looked, they found that that huge stone had be, been rolled back. And on entering the tomb, they saw a young person sitting on the right, dressed in a right robe. Now we need to keep in mind that this person was one of those angels. They were very frightened, but the youth reassured them, do not be amazed. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth, the one who was crucified. He has risen. He's not here. See the place where they laid him. And even though the angel said to them, do not be alarmed, you know that they were. Scripture even says that they were trembling when they heard the news. They were so verklempt that they didn't even know how to get words out of their mouth. They were in such shock by this miracle that just happened. Sometimes we get to use the miracle of Jesus with that some of those other miracles that happen when we get to do that, sometimes we're in disbelief. Or we might say, I don't know if that really happened. But then we get to the point where people say even that, I don't believe in the death of Jesus. I don't even understand that he paid his debts and all that for us and for the history of the world. 
It's like when Jesus told a man that to take his mat and to walk, that's something I can wrap my head around. But when it comes to the resurrection, many people have that difficulty in believing that there was something actually that really happened, that Jesus was crucified and that he actually rose from the dead. But yes, Jesus was defeated. And at the same time, what's so greater than Jesus defeating death is that Jesus offers us that undefeated life at the same time. And believe it or not, it comes free of charge to both you and to me because Jesus has already paid the bill for both of us. This message of Jesus continues to spread even today. The hundreds of thousands of people who hinge their faith on the empty tomb, knowing that we all know it to be true. Jesus is not in the tomb. The tomb is empty because Jesus is risen. He is risen indeed and undefeated. Easter blessings to each of you, Milwaukee Metropolitan Community Church, and all those who are with us this morning. May we always know that like Jesus, we can be undefeated as well. Amen.